So it's well, it's, it's almost the end of a long day. Uh, it's been a very, very amazingly full weekend. I'm, I'm still kind of like blasted with, from all the, the lessons and the, the insights that we got. And you know, we still have a little bit to, to, to work with afterwards. But as, uh, as, as a group, we're sort of here now. Maybe, uh, in addition to questions and answers and me giving a lecture at about an an ATPM, I haven't a clue what sort of an ATPM I can give you guys. We've already done a lot of the basic stuff. But, perhaps uh, just a moment to, of, of impressions, of sharing, like a closing session, what were your expectations when you came here, and what of those expectations were fulfilled? What else happened? What didn't happen that you were hoping would happen? Anything, anything at all, just to sort of just to, to have a debriefing session a little bit. Mm, well, I can. I guess I can say something. So. I had the hope, not maybe not the expectation, but um, I might um, be able to get some help with my nerves and my performance anxiety. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that has happened yet. I, I hope it might when I, if I work on this stuff. Mm -hmm. But something happened which I definitely wasn't expecting and I'm really kind of blown away that it actually happened was that. Um, because I've, of all these pieces that I played, I've just worked them out for myself really, so, yeah. um, and um, I was always thinking, well, maybe I should get someone to look at that and like talk about it musically, and I wasn't expecting that that would happen here, but it did, and that mm -hmm. was so amazing, because, because and, and especially from someone who knows these pieces so well and likes them, like, probably as much as I do, or, mm -hmm. so, that was really amazing. So um, actually, it um, it was a, a, a very nice surprise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you so much for that. Well, well it's a pleasure, and it, it's especially a pleasure to you see. You know, I always my teacher Phil Cohen always seemed to be discussing physical gesture and physical organization, and it took me a long time to realize that. He has a, had an almost autistic mind about this, but so he's totally in this physical world, and for him, none of it was physical. Like it was always the music. It was always the music. Like this sound, that that expression, that that subtle character, and everything. But of course, if you want that, you have to organize yourself in order to get it. So there was this magical uh, dovetailing of a physical organizational mindset with what's this musical structure trying to express to me and how is it using sonority to create specific stories and specific emotions and specific colors and specific characters. So it was a pleasure to explore these pieces again with you in, in that con in that very, very special context. And I, I think, I think, logically speaking, your performance anxiety should be addressed, but directly addressed by what we did, because to my mind, a lot of performance anxiety is comes from a musical soul understanding this music on a deep level, and not feeling like they have the physical equipment to to express what's inside. Sometimes uh, subliminally, unconsciously, but somewhere, you know, and even this stuff about the weighted touch, and somewhere the musical soul knows that this this weighted touch is separating all these musical events that need to be joined, and so, and of course it would make anybody nervous, mm -hmm. and so you start joining things up, you start feeling good, you start feeling like my God, I can follow this unfolding musical process and experience it and inflect it and. It's me and I am it. And I think a lot of performance anxiety 
comes from the soul's need to be in that process and to be sitting on stage and trying to be in that process but not being in that process because there's certain technical blocks. Mm. It's not like, oh, I can't play all the notes, but the higher technique, where the whole self is organized to inflect musical structures, musical orchestrations, musical colors, music, everything is on the page, like everything is on the page. So I'm, I'm hoping that, mm -hmm. that yeah, that, but, but you go through this process, this rich musical process, and we'll see. And then, there is that other kind of stage fright, which I think that never goes away. And it's because you have something that's so precious, and then, oh, if I just hang on to it, I can actually make this precious thing sound in real time. But like, what, what if I don't succeed? You know? yeah. <laughs> Even if I know everything about it, I'll tell you a story. I was sitting on stage, 1979, Massey Hall, Toronto. Massey Hall, Toronto. Where am I? Okay. And I was sitting there, and Horowitz was sitting here, and the audience was there, and it was, he was playing. And, and it was very beautiful. And his... His hands were shaking so much <laughs> that you look uh, and you see that the, the range of his shaking <laughs> is wider than a piano key. <laughs> so like how the hell is he even playing the right piano keys? He was 75 years old. I'm sure he played that piece a thousand times in concert. And why would and he played it sublime like you know that that when 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 finally at the very, very end and and I think, you know, so he's sort of getting towards the end of the piece. He's getting towards the end of the piece. And you can hear it on Google and on YouTube, Horowitz, Massey Hall, Toronto, 1979. It's on, it's on. And he's getting towards that part. I'm, I'm a young guy. I'm, a, uh, I'm 24 years old and I... Here it comes, here it comes. Well, what, if, what, if, what if it's ineffably as beautiful as I think it could be in my heart of hearts? <laughs> and it was. <laughs> it was. Oh my God. It was just. You, you, you live for these experiences, and you, 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 your soul feels like maybe I will never have such an experience, and then you have it. It's unbelievable. But he's like. Why? Because he knows, like, it could happen, but there's no guarantee. There's mm -hmm. never a guarantee. And it's just, you're confronted with the, the amazingness of this music. It's something quails, like something. Yeah. It's very mysterious. I think that kind of stage fright is beautiful and, like, live with it, baby. <laughs> you know? But the other kind, I think yeah. it really can be addressed. I really, I strongly feel, I've seen it many times with my students. There, you know, they, oh, professor, a, we we're do the work, we prepare some concert, they play, and they don't even notice that they have no stage fright anymore. It, they forgot all about it. <laughs> and I don't even bring it up, because yeah. why, I might re... re right. <laughs> yeah. okay. Cool. Anybody else? Yeah, maybe something more, which I... Yeah. I, I thought about it, I hoped for learning something about the movements mm -hmm. and I was not aware that th these Feldenkrais uh, lectures would be kind of so extensive, I thought it would be more part of the whole process, uh -huh, but uh -huh. actually what I learned is, I, I think now with these movements I have kind of a toolbox that I can mm. apply to all different sets of things. That's right, it's a toolbox. It's, it's really nice, it's not no. only about those pieces that we really mm -hmm. uh, looked at, but what it was really astonishing that I started to actually hear myself and not only what I think the music should sound, but that through that experimentation it's more like actually being able to experiment with the sound that's coming out of the piano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's it's real theory now. Let's yeah, differentiate in a way maybe. Cool. So Great. Thank you. Great. Glad to share the toolbox. It's like 
it's always exciting to, to see how these mm -hmm. tools, how they work, how it works out in real time in specific pieces. Yes, I, Alex. I tell you. Uh, what? Alec. Alec. Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, I talked with, with Mario. Mario said, oh, Ellen is coming. And I said, well, oh, okay. Fine. <laughs> yeah, um, so what? You have to. So <laughs> what? <laughs> so what? <Yeah. laughs> you have to. Then, you know, and, I, I can, and I said, why? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I can't do. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not. I just play for, for, for a little while, so why not? I'm not. There's a benefit. Uh. And I come here, and, I, and, and my plan was, and then I, I booked you. Mm -hmm. And then um, I'm waiting for the schedule, and I thought for myself, okay, it goes four days. Mm. So, um, yeah, I, come, I just come to my lessons, and then I go home. It was not the plan, the only four days. Uh, they come. Sorry to screw up your weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and I come here and I'm asking Mario, oh, why is these, 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 how do you call it? This, this yoga. The no yoga mats. The yoga mats. Yeah. Uh, why is it? <laughs> and, and he said, guess, guess what? Fancy <laughs> price too. And I, uh, <laughs> I, I went, you know? <laughs> and then, and what happened? I was the whole four days here, mm -hmm. and I enjoyed it so mm -hmm. much, and I didn't expect that it would be so interesting to, mm -hmm. to watch the lessons and what you, you get from the, the lessons. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's too much for me, mm -hmm. because I'm, I think, just a beginner, but, but I think in any way you get always something. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, I get a big benefit, uh, I work with Mario, so what I'm very happy about those four days. It was a great experience and be sure next time I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm here. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's a many people, I think many people don't come because they don't realize it's going to be so interesting. It's like, why would I do four days of this movement shit? I mean, what? So, <laughs> and, 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 why? <laughs> and I think the idea in general, give it to any other instrument, you have to 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 uh, work with your body because mm. it is a body work. Yeah. And most of the people think it comes from heaven. Yeah, right. God given. <laughs> yeah. And from brain, just mm -hmm. and they all forget that it's just work. Also, yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, and that's yeah. absolutely my idea. Yeah. Thank you. A, a pleasure. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Mario. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, maybe to expand a little bit on that, I was hoping to get some tools to improve my technique, to try mm -hmm. or to tackle pieces where I had difficulties or be brave enough to try pieces I wouldn't try before. But I think what I found was a completely new approach of playing the piano. Uh -huh. So it's not just, you know, um, someone, somebody showing you some tricks and how this can be improved, but to me, this is a completely new approach. Mm. And mm. I'm very happy, I mean, I could have come much earlier, <laughs> I wasn't aware that this exists, and I think it helped me, would, have, would have helped me a lot, uh, but it's never too late. Never too late, exactly. And um, I went to Yugoslavia at 35, <laughs> I started. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I will be very excited to go home and to try all this. And I think it also, ha uh, yeah, it was very beneficial to come here first without studying in detail all your books. Mm -hmm. I mean, I bought those books and the DVD and started watching it. And then but it was on your bookshelf for years. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was it looked nice on the difficult to understand, but coming here and being demonstrated how that works yeah. helped a lot. Yeah, the, the trouble is the books are really difficult to understand. Yeah, I felt I had to write them because that, that information has to be out there somehow. Yeah. But really, to, to, to read the books and not have some actual you know, personal experience, is, uh, many people actually did write and they say, yeah, they, the books helped me. But it's not easy. Not easy. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, cool. It was great. Yeah. And also, I was a little bit afraid that there were only 
these musicians here doing that as a profession. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm happy that um, yeah, most of us are playing like me just for fun. That's right. Uh, and that's great. Cool. Yeah, it's always a mix. I always, uh, like I said before, I always love it that the 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 really the advanced people they learn because they see how to work with relative beginners and the beginners they just love it when I yell at the advanced people. <laughs> yeah. Grow your arts. What sort of a arm movement is that? It's all the same shit. <laughs> <laughs> really great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I could work with book because mm -hmm. I think I have this photograph background. Have, yes, yes. And yeah. then it was nice to and, and this was what it was what uh, attires me to come because mm. I thought I would like to 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 see you working and mm -hmm. I think this was my really intention to to see you working how you teach I had no idea that I will play <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> and um, and actually yeah it found it because I. I on my own during my training and after my training, of course, I, I developed some things like for me, you, you have this oil thing and the piles and I often with my kids, I have, I bought, built a castle and I asked them to unbuild the castle and only one pile is resting uh -huh. and look if the pile castle crashes down or not. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I have some, some similar things That's right. with my kids to establish this. Yeah. And, but it's nice to get a feedback that what I'm doing is not, I'm not doing just something which maybe works. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> to, yeah. yeah, it got me more self-confidence to oh, see yeah. all this. You stuff. were actually on the right track. Yeah, you never know. You never know. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> <clears throat> you never know, you never know. And this is really, this is enrichment. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah, also that this something which I, yesterday, I, was playing the front student and and she really she got this a totally new form of her hand and mm -hmm. while establishing the thumb connected to the ear. Yeah. Well thank you very much. <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah maybe I start practicing punk. <laughs> Oh my god. Why don't you just, why don't you just start playing? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 I have to read the text. Just play. Just play. <laughs> I, I don't know if the world is ready for Ulrika playing concerts and things like no, that. No. <laughs> no, no, I mean play. Playing for yourself. Uh, at yeah. home, whatever. Yeah, I mean, yeah. 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 yeah, just do it. Just do it. Great. Well, I, I must say, this, this has been one of the most stimulating and exciting institutes I've ever taught. It's, it's, you've, it's been a wonderful group. Uh, very, very responsive, very speculative, very open, very, like, um, maintaining your concentration and being in the experience for a whole lesson, like, really, for me, very exciting. And me learning new things, too. So it's a uh, uh, very, very grateful <laughs> to all of you. Cool. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So, having said that, what else do we need to talk about in terms of a lecture? Are there any specific things which are still unclear or something I forgot to mention? I spoke a lot about the sun. We didn't speak much about rotation, but we did this kind of rotation thing in the awareness of movement les lesson yesterday. And I think, I think the, over, the overarching theme of like all these seemingly physical organization issues, how they map onto the, the actual musical structures, I think that's one of the things that, that came out really beautifully this weekend, which I'm really happy about. So maybe just a little bit more about um, about the differentiation of the hand and this difficult uh, idea of, of you need an arch structure but it does not need to be a solid block and what you just what you just mentioned Ulrika about, about so stand uh, we could uh, because you we stand up in the structure and then if we go to one 
does it collapse, or if we go to one, does it actually maintain itself? So you just start with four, you could even just do one finger, and start with four, and of course if I stand up in that arc structure, I'm already moving in my pelvis. And then maybe go to one, try it. And then, now look, the, but really try and feel, if I walk to another finger, was there any moment of a, a collapse or something? Or, and feel, 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 feel. And gradually, 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 that finger is standing up a little bit more. And that hip joint is getting a little more in contact. And then, oh my God, and the, the other hip joint got un, unattached. And then try that one. And move your body, move your body. So that the body going with, and then very, and you see that, the standing finger has a big mountain on the top. And then the, the, other, the next finger, as soon as you touch, that mountain gets a little more. And then, oh, oh my God, and oh, they're almost equal. And then when you really start to transfer the weight, the, the arm lets go and the shoulder lets go and the body moves. And then all of a sudden, there's another mountain and the first mountain disappeared. But it didn't disappear suddenly. It disappears gradually. And so now try and start making another mountain. But the, but did did was there a moment like when you sunk down and lost connection, or was the transfer really continuous? And please move your body more. Now look, if you're going to go to some other, yeah, yeah, do it by shifting the weight on your sit bones. That's right. And if you go forward, you shift the weight forward. And if you go back, you shift the weight back. And if you go over here. And so then just, and you, maybe you'll find, oh my God, it fell down. And then go back and try again and try a different trajectory, a tra different trajectory, a different trajectory. And figure out, because there's many old habits, there's many different ways you could screw it up. There's many, all sorts of different ways you could fall down. And then, but there's all sorts of different ways you could solve the falling down. And, oh, just stay on one finger a little longer. And, oh, look at that mountain. And, oh, uh, although I said when you're in unstable equilibrium, the, the top, the knuckle joint, the second medic, the, the metacarpal phalanger joint here of the fifth finger is directly over the fingertip. But then, oh, well, you could sort of start doing little circles like this. Uh, you see it's buckling, but then, okay, lighten up and then try again and see if you could do a circle. And no buckling, no buckling. It's just, ah, oh, well, that's how it stands. Oh, this muscle has to do a little more, or that muscle has to do a little less. Oh, oh somehow I, I managed to stand with, without it collapsing. And then I went all the way around the circle and it didn't collapse. I should be demonstrating with my other hand because this... Fucking dystonia is ruining everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here. Da 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 I buckle. Okay, it buckled. And then uh 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 no. The, this one has to come higher if you want to go there. With your pelvis. Yeah, and now with your pelvis back here. And now watch it. Now look, you're going to go forward with your pelvis. And look, it did not buckle. You see? Mm -hmm. It's because it's complete. It's the organization. is all the joints. Every element of the kinematic chain. The distal phalange, the medial phalange, the proximal phalange, the metacarpal bone, the wrist, the forearm, the elbow, the upper arm, the shoulder, the torso. And now, yeah, and now, oh, try that same thing on another one. And, oh, this one is worse. It likes to buckle all over the place. Holy crap. Well, just, if you press more, there's two ways to make it buckle less. One is to press more and, like, stand the fuck up. Like, just get a life, you know, and press more. And then, ah, now I look at, if I press more, the Alp even has snow on top of it. But sometimes that doesn't work because things are just too screwy. And then instead of pressing more, like in my first book I said, even come in and press down on the keystone of the arch. And if the arch structure is good, the keystone will, pressing down on the keystone will make it stronger. But that's not happening with you. 
because the keystone's already gone. You're already like this. So get it back up, get it back up, get it back up, get it back up. And now do the Feldenkrais version, which is to back off. And don't stand with a kilogram of, of weight on that finger. Stand as if you were floating mm -hmm. with two grams of weight on the fingertip. And it's barely connected to your leg. And now that mountain is fine, and now you can go around here. And now, of course, it's not going to buckle. And then you add five grams of weight, and you see if you can do that without it buckling. And it forward and back and left and right. And then you come back here, and then you add another five grams of weight. You press a little more. But as soon as you feel it's going to buckle, you back off, press less, and then try again. That's it. You're teaching, your, you're teaching your finger how to stand and how to all the variations in standing. It needs this variation if it wants to go to the next finger. It needs this variation if it wants to go to the next finger. And so you explore. And then eventually you get to the point where you can put like 100 grams on there. Uh, but, and again, uh, Ulrika, come to the point where and then make the finger too straight. Make it straight like this. Yeah? And now, and now press in. Ah! You see, that's the first way of pressing into the finger and not having it collapse. Mm -hmm. Many people will not be ready to have a curled or a curved, let's say, a curved finger like this. And now I'm going to press it. Oh, it buckles. Oh, now I'm going to press it. Oh, it collapses. So for that, the curved one, you need to just do 5 grams, 10 grams. But if you really want to, well, I really want to be able to press. Okay, then you straighten it totally and bam, bam, like that. Yeah. And that galvanizes the hand's hip joint, the metacarpal phalanger joint. Now, once you've done it in this primitive way, this one bone finger, many times concert pianists will play with the one bone finger. It's not always curved, it's not always curled. So this is useful even in performance. And, but then we need the other one. So now we go back to two grams. Maybe let's sh shift the finger, let's do another finger. Two grams, five grams, 10 grams. But always, you see how I'm always linking my, the rocking of the pelvis on this. So it's really, it's one sits bone here, two sits bones here. It's a triangle. Bing, bing, bing. And then the whole system is light enough so that it could curve a little more without collapsing. It could curve a little less without collapsing. And eventually you press a little more and explore degrees of curling. But you know, you're starting to feel, if I press this much, it's going to collapse. So don't go there. Just stay a little less, stay a little less, and feel more and more like, and you can do more and more things like walking from one to another without collapsing, without collapsing, without collapsing, without collapsing. And then eventually you could just lie down and say enough of that. That's right. Yeah, and the lying down moment is very interesting too. That's very, this is a very important part. You saw how many times today we did palming the keys and everything. So just, you've been doing that with one hand, so now put the two hands by your sides and see whether the hand that was doing all that exploration of, of standing, whether it feels different from the other. Hmm? Damn, the camera's too high, it didn't even see my hand. Christ almighty. And we got the other hand. Hmm? We got the other hand. You got the other end? And uh -huh. No, no, my, my camera was looking at me from here up <laughs> without my legs. Ah, I wish I'd done that before. But you were talking to me. Yeah, okay, you'll probably see it, yeah. Now, <laughs> the other issue I wanted to address in this ATPM was the wrist. <laughs> We're going right. <laughs> we're going right back to the first lesson in this whole institute, where we we had a wrist 
which just did not want to breathe out. So let's actually recreate that wrist. So take a hand, take a hand and do the five fingers on the, oh! <coughs> we'll, no, we'll, let's, we'll do that now. Forget the, the wrist, we do, we're going to do some one thing preparatory to this. Take that hand and slide it forward and and again, this is a, a technique you can use because some of you, you're very good at standing and not buckling with a little bit of pressure or no pressure, but when you put pressure, the only way you could stand without buckling was to do the one bone finger, okay? So now, this is a technique to help you get to stronger standing with not the one bone finger, but a more curved finger. Slide it forward, slide it forward. The, the fingers, the three fingers are oozing over the patella, the kneecap. And the thumb is on the inside of the patella, the inside edge of the patella. And the fifth finger is on the outside edge of the patella. So you, the, your kneecap is this round bone here. And the middle three fingers ooze over and cover up that kneecap and the thumb is to the inside and the fingers to the outside. And then, so now the fingertips are at the bottom of the kneecap. So you just, and now, as if you were going to grasp the kneecap. And did you see? Don't curl so much. I'm actually, I'm not curling my fingertips at all. That's next. The first you do it and the whole finger, the whole finger, it may be curved a bit because it's, look, it's got a natural curve. But this grasping comes from the metacarpal phalangeal joint, not from curling. So first we do this kind of thing, this kind of thing, but it's on the kneecap, so you will see a certain curvature. But the animation comes from the metacarpal phalangeal joint. The animation comes from here. And you feel, you grab the patella, the thumb is behind the patella, the fifth finger is behind the patella, and the, the, the fingertips are at the bottom of the patella, but they're not yet hooking in. First do the fingertips, the flat fingertip on the bottom of the patella, the flat fingertip on the bottom. Some people call it the meniscus, some people call it the kneecap, and let go. So, da 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 and I lie down, lie down, rest. Your thumb could be a little bit further to the inside. I don't think you're behind the kneecap. Okay? Try that. It's different, eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that little separation of church and state, the thumb and hand, that really goes a long way towards changing, yeah, the quality of this gra grasping. Yeah. Uh, uh, Kristen, you're a little too far down. Um, uh, yeah, the meniscus, the kneecap has a top edge right around here, and that edge is, should be right here mm -hmm. on the that side. Yeah. Okay. Go back. No, no. Go. Put your hands back here. There. That should feel better. And now try. Uh -huh. Like that. Yeah, but slowly, slowly. Slowly grip until it's really gripping strong and then slowly, very gradually. So from a full grip, which is quite strong, to just resting, it should take about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Oh now I'm gripping fully. And now reduce that grip so slowly. One, two, uh, ten, nine. Gradually more, gradually more, four, five, six, seven, until it's the max. And then gradually less, gradually less, seven, six, five, four, three, two, rest. Like that. This was given to me by Tao Wei, an English pianist. Okay? 
the same thing, but now I'm going to hook in uh, there like that. But did you see? I hooked them in, but I didn't lose this. People hook in and they go like that and they lose the metacarpal phalangeal joint, the power in the medical and metal, the, the metal, metal fartal calendule joint. And so, yeah, hook in, hook in, hook in. And you'll see the metacarpal phalangeal joints, they sort of want to collapse, but don't let them. Just hook in, hook in, and still grow this one. Hook in here, grow this one. Hook in here. Hook in here, grow this one. Hook in here, grow this one. And let it go. Rest. That's a stronger, like, that's really weird. Okay, do it without hooking, just the metacarpal phalanges. Da 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 da, mmm, I feel empowered. Da, 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 da. And now hook, hook it in and don't, and it's like, they're, they're, it's, ooh, it's more intense, like it's, the guts are, are stronger, more involved somehow. Oh. It's like, there's more power in there. It's really, I didn't expect that. I feel inside, my whole body is, the whole body's kind of going like this. All my guts are going, oh. but they're not tensing, but they're, it's like the, the, the karate, the key is, is more engaged because I, I managed to add the curving of the nail joint to this fundamental empowering of the hand's hip joint. Take a rest. Now that's a little... Okay, it's, it's good. It, I thought it's too much, but it's good. I think it's good. Yeah. You have to fool around. Now you're losing your, 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 no, you're losing the metacarpal phalangeal. Don't lose the metacarpal phalangeal. Look, if this gets more, if this gets more, then this should get more too. You understand? You yeah. see?